And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome here to Chase Race number five of season seven of the NCAA Snickers Cup Series, finishing up what's been a rather interesting Lime Rock race weekend. It certainly has been a point shaker, and we're getting ready to see just exactly what the points will look like after today's event here at Lime Rock. We're getting ready for the Mountain Dew Lime Twist 450 here at Lime Rock Raceway, and I'm being joined here in the booth by Chris Dollarton. Thanks for joining me, Chris. Uh, pleasure to be here, co commentating my first NNS area race. So yeah, it's going to be fun here at the track. I usually, I you could say, I built it. Yes, this is a track that uh, you've had very good success at, except for the Truck Series race two days ago. And I got to ask you, how are you feeling after that uh, in the tire barrier? I feel impaled, but I think I'll be okay. You think you'll be okay? You better be. You got a season nine Snickers Cup Series ride, so <laughs> you got to be better by then, at least. Well, I mean, I'm still running in trucks next season, but... Good point. All right, so as we're getting ready here for this race, Michael Norman going to be on the pole position for this event. Norman, a former winner this season, won back at Spartan, and he's looking for his second win of the season. Alongside of him, a former Mobile Cup Series champ in Pichu, London, still looking for his first win of the season. And then you got Chasers lining up in row two. Andrea Erickson, who is currently 13th in the point stands, a total of 61 points out. And Sean Henley, who is currently 24 points out and 6th in the standings. Now, you know this track pretty well, Chris. Which, which is better, getting track position or being at the back and relying on pit strategy? Well, if I remember back correctly, uh, season five, whenever I won this race, which set me up for the championship, I think I did start mid-pack, so usually mid-pack's the way to go. Although I'm not sure, quite sure I remember where I started in the truck race last time, this last time around here, this two days ago, um, I'm not sure, I don't know, can't quite remember where I started, but usually you want to be around mid-pack, but usually at a road course, you want to be up front, there, there's, I mean, you can make up to, make it your way up to the front a lot quicker from the front, and then starting in the back. Then again, pit strategy could come into play, so anything could happen here at Lime Rock. In our Mobile Cup Series race, we end up having a lot of the well-known road course racers up at the front of the field, not really a whole lot of surprise names up in the top 10. Do you think we're going to see the same thing here today, or are we going to see a driver that we may not consider a road course racer up here in a potential battle for the win? Uh, It depends. I mean, like I, like I said, honestly, this is... I can treat this track like Daytona. Not well, not really, but anyone can win at this racetrack because of being with the adding a pit strategy and all this stuff. So maybe we'll see some road course winners like McCurry and Mason up here, or we'll see a, a really odd winner like Charles Jackson or something. So, well, we know that these drivers cannot make it the full 20 laps on one tank of fuel. They will have to make a pit stop. So we'll get these cars rolling off. Uh, the point situation coming into this race. Anthony McCurry is currently the points leader over a two-way tie for second between Chris Washer and our Mobile Cup Series winner yesterday, Joshua Collard. They are 13 points back. John Citadino's fourth in points. He is a total of 19 points back. Charles Sanford fifth in points. He is 21 points back. Then, as we mentioned, Sean Henley, he's 24 points back in sixth. Bob Jones is a total of 26 points back in seventh. Ian Dutta is 33 points back in eighth. Jacob Lawler, ninth. And Dylan Pogteet, Noah Hart, Harrison Langford, Andrea Erickson, and Danny Wells. Do these guys, do you think, have time to get themselves back up in the championship picture? Because there's five more races after this. And the furthest down, Danny Wells is 80 points back. Do you see a possibility here of these drivers with a good run today maybe getting themselves back in the title picture? It's possible. Usually you consider this race your do-or-die race because if you don't do well in this race, there's a really high chance you're not going to get up there and still be up to battle, although there is that outside chance you can. But basically, if you don't do good today, I think you may be written off from the season eight, from the season 7 uh, Cup Series Championship. But you never know what can happen during the series. I mean, a lot of the people up above, above the points, they could have a lot of trouble the next five weeks, and you could have the best five weeks ever, and maybe come back. But that's kind of the problem. So, basically, you get in this race or you're done. Well, you uh, raced in the Truck Series race. You've had an opportunity to observe these drivers this weekend. Who's your pick to win here today at Lima? Well, I'm really, I'm going to go with, uh, I, I have to go with the first I have to go with McCurry. He does so well at this these tracks. 
Um, he, he, he's always done well at road courses, but, um, who knows what's going to happen to him today. I mean, looks by the looks of it, is he starting mid pack or towards he's starting, the back? he's actually tell. starting towards close to the tail end of the field. looks like him collared Sam for mm. a lot of chases back here. All right. Yeah. But yeah, McCurry's my pick for, to maybe pull it out today. All right. I'm going to go with a guy that, uh, kind of was almost in the same situation that Joshua Collard was in. He's actually been really close going to victory lane the last couple of weeks, and that's Kyle Matthews. He's a former winner this season, and he's trying to pick up his second win of the season. Didn't have a good run here in the uh, Trucks or Mullen Cup Series race, but he's starting up front here today, so I think he could be a contender as we are green flag racing here at Lime Rock. Now, Chris, we ended up going basically until our first green flag pit stop in the Truck Series race before we had a caution. The Mullen Cup Series race, though, we were under the yellow flag all the time. Do you think we're going to have... Not as many cautions here in this race, or are we going to be under the yellow more than under the green? Uh, well, these cars are a bit different from the mobile cars, and definitely different from the trucks, but um, who knows what's going to happen today. I mean, these guys, I mean, if you look back last week at Indianapolis, um, that was a wild Snickers race, both for it and so we may come up with a lot of cautions today, but I don't know, we'll have to see. Right now, top two have definitely broken away, Michael Norman and Pichu London. And then Andrea Erickson's there in third. There was actually a raging battle for third, but now it's actually for fourth. Trent Dunham going side by side with his buddy Sean Henley. And it looks like we're under the caution already. Well, I called it. Oh, and another thing I forgot to point out. I think Megan's going to get mad at me for not picking her today. So, yeah. Sorry, uh, Megan, if you're watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, the caution flag's out, though. Let's see who was involved. Oh, Cole Daly, who did the Superman oh. fly last week at Indianapolis. Looks like he's got his trouble for the second week in a row. Tough break for Cole. And there's uh, Charles Samper with some damage on the rear of his babbling Toyota, but... Uh, guys, don't back up. Come yeah, on. don't do that. They haven't done it all week, so hopefully they won't do it here. Collard's back here, too. William Duncan's back here. I don't know. Maybe, I don't, he, I don't maybe know. he's stuck. I'm not sure. McLeod, Dutta, they got damage, but they all were here at the tail end of the pack, so we may have actually just had a spin or something, and then they were able to sort it out quickly. I don't know. Let's hope Daly didn't do the jump, and apparently he's continuing. Yeah, he's going to continue on. He'll stay on the lead lap. So we're on lap 2 of 20, first caution. They didn't short pit in the Mobile Cup Series race. Nobody came down when we had the caution come out of the first lap of that event. What do you think? We're going to see them come down pit road here, or are they going to stay out and maybe wait for another caution flag? It's too early. It's too early. I've waited a little bit, maybe just so that maybe you can keep where you're at in track position. But uh, well, here we go. I would By have to agree with you because we know they can make it about 12 laps out. on fuel, and they are going to indeed stay out. So that'll give us the opportunity to look back at a caution at what ha brought out the caution flag, a replay of it. Cold Alley appears to be part of what happened. So let's take a look. And here's a look what happened. Three drivers that we know were involved are right here. And, oh, Schwallenberg got up in the grass. I think he got, got loose. I think he got loose and, up uh, there in that grass. I can't really see things behind the trees here. But, yes, Schwallenberg got loose up in the grass. He came down into Collard and Samper, and that's what sent them around. And I'm thinking either Cole got held up by this. And, oh, man, Schwallenberg going up on the hill there. But maybe Cole went ran into one of them and... Here we go. Yep, oh, Samfer's going to come up and get Cole. Yep. Not Ooh. a whole lot of room in this area of the track, especially, to be able to maneuver through because, you know, there's there's more grass than there is racing surface. There's McLeod. Yeah, I mean, yeah, McLeod. I don't know. How oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait. William Duncan oh, wait a minute. and Dutta got collected in this. Well, I knew there was something up with William Duncan because I... I, I did see him back there with McCurry whenever we before we started, but I, I wasn't sure if he got involved in anything. Those trees are kind of obstructing the view, so we can't really see. We can't get a good enough camera angle to see what exactly happened to these guys. Actually, maybe we better go to the helicopter view, because the TV1 is like the only view we can look at. Yeah, oh, basically. Just... Here we go. Yeah, helicopter they, cam. They all just were basically trying to slow down for the wreck up ahead, and I think Dutta is going to hook Duncan, and that's how that happens. Mm. Cold Alley bounces yeah, off of the Dutta. Yeah, and McLeod did a little whirl around. Did he get in the collar? I think yeah, he, did. he did. Yep, that's where that rear end damage came from. And up there on top, you can see where Sanford then comes up and collects Cold Alley. 
Boy, we actually were rather fortunate there, though, because that was, that was somewhere up, I think, just inside the top 25, and for the most part, it looks like maybe about six drivers were collected in this, but nobody with significant damage, and as we saw, it looks like they're all going to be able to continue and on the lead lap. Yep. Uh, yep. Way to go, Chris, but yeah, I think um, this uh, we got away with one here. So we're under the caution for the first time today. Let's head back now for the restart. Yay. Getting ready to go back to green flag racing here on lap 4 of 20. Top 10 as we go back to green are Michael Norman, Pichu London, highest running chasers, Andrea Erickson in third. Fourth, Trent Dunham, fifth, Sean Henley. Then it's going to be Jacob Lawler, Cody Lamas, Bob Jones, Dylan Young, and Dylan Pote. Looks like about, <laughs> uh, counting them here, five chasers up here in the top 10. And as you were saying before, these drivers stayed out that last time probably to keep track position, which uh, apparently is seeming to be where they need to have because that wreck ended up happening near the rear of the field. Yeah, there, that, that's Yeah, basically, yeah, I'm just going to agree with what you said. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so Michael Norman, Pichu London, they did not exactly get as good a jump this time as they did last time. And now with a single file restart, maybe, just maybe, we can get under a green flag run. Hopefully. I mean, hopefully, but then the, usually the butt stop may, may make some issues going in through there, but I don't know. We'll have to see. Trying to see if we can find a battle going on here. Here's one here between go. Dylan Young, last week's winner at Indy, and Bob Jones. He's now cracked the top ten, and he's now, I believe, in the eighth position right now. Good run here after a win at Indianapolis, and there's my pick, Kyle Matthews, coming up. Dylan Poteet lost some ground there. And here comes Jessica Shelton now all of a sudden up here in the 29. And the caution's out again. Yay, caution. Yay, cautions. We love cautions. I think I made a good prediction. Cautions breeding cautions at Lime Rock. Now let's just see who was involved. That's if the it's question. Oh, if it's, it's his teammate, Silver Fox. Oh. Man, this guy can't catch a break. It's, I think this is like his third week he's been running up pretty well, and he gets collected in something. Yeah, they need to, and looks, was that Schwallenberg? Yeah. Yeah, Schwallenberg back here. Silver Fox appears to be the only driver in trouble, though. Yeah, there is black smoke erupting out of there, and we all know when black smoke erupts, your day's done. And this could be trouble. Silver Fox is just now going around that right-hander down the hill, and the leaders at 35 miles per hour, they may catch up to him. Well, hopefully Silver Fox can get the pit road before them. Certainly but... hope so. Well, hopefully you can get over the hill, hopefully. Let's see. I'm trying to see. You can't really even see any of the black smoke from Silver Fox, so it looks like they will not be coming up here on that machine. Let's see if they're going to make pit stops this time. This time it would be on lap 6 of 20, so they'd be about two laps short if they pitted. But then again, some of these guys at the rear of the field, you never know. They may actually come down try and get some fresh rubber to work their way through the field, and nope, uh, nobody's nope. coming. Yeah, they all choose to stay out, but we might as well go back through here, see if anyone's going to... Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Is Danny oh. coming? Or... Danny? Danny? No, he just no? kind of stalled, I guess. That was interesting. <laughs> no, there's McCurry. Oh, Ooh, Richard, Richard Johnson. Johnson. He's got some damage on the hood of that machine. He may have actually been the one to get together with Silver Fox. That may be right. Let's see if anybody else is coming. Oh, Charles Jackson. He's got damage. Uh, uh Mr. Mayo. Uh, poor fella. The mayonnaise man. Mm, Cold Alley's coming back in. Yeah. Probably getting more damage repaired on his machine. So, it looks like. Possibly Richard Johnson, Charles Jackson, and James Silverfox. The reason this caution came out, let's jump back, look at yet another replay here at Lime Rock. Caution! Well, here's a look at what happened. Almost shades of what happened to Schwallenberg on our last caution. McIntyre's going to get into the grass, and he clips McCrory, the points leader. Oh, oh and McCrory is... He got that the... steel guardrail a bit. Yeah. Oh, further back there, Drew Austin turns Jake Rogers, and then Charles Jackson turns James McLeod. And then Richard Johnson turns Silver Fox. Everybody turning everybody. Jeez. 
good heavens. Oh, Silver Fox up and on his side, up against the steel guardrail for a moment there. And Austin over. Oh, oh my goodness, we had two cars flipping. And at a, and you don't normally see that at a road course, and I think Jackson just hit. Who, I, I think I can't tell. Is that Jake Rogers? I mean, just hit, or is that somebody? No, that's Silver Fox. That's Silver Fox. Um, okay, kind of blurry, so I couldn't really tell. But anyway, um, yeah, you don't normally see uh, cars flip at road courses unless your name is um, Ward Burton. But yeah, that that that's normally not expected. No, it's not, and. I mean, the, the difference maybe is the fact these cars carry a little bit more horsepower than the Trucks and Mobile Cup Series machines do, but, boy, that's the second time that we've had an incident take place there, and that's actually not been a problem for drivers this entire weekend. That area of the track, and we're two for two in our cautions taking place in wrecks in that very part of the track. Yep, we're basically going to call that our trouble spot here at Lime Rock for today, anyway. Yeah, so Lime Rock completely different today as than what it's been this entire weekend looks like silver fox's day may be over don't know about these other drivers but we're about to find out so we'll head back to green getting ready to go back to green top 10 pretty much the same michael norman lees pichu len in second then it's erickson dunham henley lawler Lamas, dylan young kyle matthews and now jessica shelton has cracked the top 10 getting ready to go back to green flag racing here our points leader Anthony McCurry, we saw him get a piece of that incident last time around. He's restarting back here in the 29th position, and we know the guy trying to run him down in the point stands, Chris Washer, is actually starting up around the 11th position, so McCurry's got some work to do. Yeah, McCurry's in some trouble. Um, geez, every time someone you have co-commentating with you makes a pick, they always do awful. I mean, look at last week. Okay, better not say the name, but... Anyway. <laughs> Don't say it. Don't keep the jinx going. Yeah, anyway. Oh, three wide back here. Meg is Megan Atkins, Ian Dutta, Charles Samfer. Can't really see a thing. I mean... No, it's, the dust it's, kicked it's up dust. there. You can't see anything. And wait a minute. Are they actually going to make... They're going to make a green flag lap. I jinxed oh, it. My... I jinxed it! No! Oh, spin up ahead. Oh my goodness, oh, it's, it's a pile-up. Pile up. It's a pile-up. Rogers, Corbett, McIntyre, Galligan, Duncan, you name them, we got them. They're all in there. Is that Atkins you have focused That's you Atkins. On? Dang it. Johnson's in it. And Anthony McCrory is collected. Sorry, McCrory. Oh really sorry. my goodness. Caution flag is going to come out yet again. These guys are looking to race it back. Yeah, I think they are. That's not exactly such a smart idea. We got some disabled cars there on the inside. But they make it through. So Michael Norman yeah. is the leader still. These caution flags are certainly his best friend because if... Pichu London ever gets a charge on him, he's got only basically one lap to be able to make a move on the three because then they're under caution the next lap. Yeah. Now then, now, now pit stops could still come into play, so Pichu may have to rely on that if if he can't get around Michael Mormon. It's a good point. One thing I noticed too in the Mobile Cup Series race that we're going to have to see here in Snickers Cup Series race is during the pit stops nobody took tires in the Mobile Cup Series race. It was always gas and go You'd think at a road course you'd want to have more better tire grip and everything so you'd end up coming down and uh, getting good your eagles, but no, they decided to just go for the fuel. So let's see if they're going to make any pit stops here on this lap. This is lap 9 of 20. It'll be lap 10 of 20 when they cross the line, so we'll be at the halfway point. Nobody has come down pit road as of yet, and are they going to come this time? Yes, they are. Here come the leaders. Yep, here they here come the cavalry. Here they go. So let's see if Michael Norman's pit crew can do what Michael Norman's been doing all day, and that's stay out in front 
Oh, Danny Wells on pit road. This has got to be about his fifth straight DNF. I think that may write him off from the championship punt now. Yeah, poor Danny. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I, and that may be done. He's done, I think. So and the guy's staying out. I was there. just going to say, guys... Washer is staying out. Now, yeah, let's is... see what they're going to do for the, everybody down here. Michael Norman and Peter London, are they going to go tires? Yes, yes they, are. they are. So this is the first time Ooh, this Bob entire... Jones did not get into his pit style good. No, he didn't. He had to kind of get around Dylan Young. Two tire stops for everybody. Yep, and Michael will win the race off. Well, that's at least an improvement off the fuel-only stops we had in the Mobile One race. And I think... I think the lead will cycle to Chris. Yeah, Megan Atkins will be on the tail end of the lead lap, but Chris Washer, Chris. tied for second in points, decides not to pit, and he has stayed out and inherited the lead. Interesting strategy on the part of the 10. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Did Jessica Shelton stay out also? I believe or did she, she did. No, nope, she was. She stayed out. She'll be second. Matthews third. Fourth Lamas. Poteet in fifth. Mary Colby 6th, 7th will be Citadino, Noah Hart in 8th, ninth Ralph Mason, 10th Harrison Langford, and the rest of the drivers that stayed out were Jake Cole, James McLeod, Charles Sanford, Richard Johnson, Charles Jackson, and Cole Daly, I believe. Yeah, he's still on the lead lap, and now I think he's up in the top 15. Great job by Cole Daly. I mean, even getting wrecked and coming down pit stop on the second caution, he's got himself back up in near the front, at least. Well, we're going to quickly jump back to a replay because they're going to be going green very very shortly so we'll look at a replay real quick and be back for the green flag well we pinpointed where the wreck began it was just inside the top 20 Kyle Corbett who had a tough race in the Mobile Cup Series race yesterday he and Danny Wells get together oh man if they were back in about another 50 feet or so they would have been wherever I hit in the truck race but oh heavy hit for Corbett and it's not over. Some other stuff happened. Oh, my it's gonna clip. Some. Holy cow! Galligan just literally got shoved by McCurry into Danny Wells. Well, McCurry, you're the points leader. And oh, the I'm hits a, a... just keep on coming. Atkins, Sanford, Duncan. You know, I'm looking in. at Atkins. I don't think Atkins really got involved that badly. I think the reason she teleported Until to pit road. Sanford. No, no, no. Because I saw front end damage to her car whenever we we're. She's up there after pit stop, so she. I think she ran into the back of McLeod or oh, maybe got okay. shoved by Sand or something. But it looks like she actually teleported to pit road because she was kind of lodged back here for some reason. Wasn't able to go anywhere. There's Ian Dutta. Yeah, she, That's well, a chaser. Yep. Yeah. Uh, man, just a litter of cars here on the front stretch. It's like a blockade. Yeah, it's like a parking lot there, and that's why it was kind of. That's why I think you were kind of nervous with this, with them racing back to the line, because there's all this waiting for the leaders. Yeah. Hey, uh, Michael Norman, we have a present for you. It's called a black front stretch. Woo! Yay! <laughs> So the caution comes out for this huge, huge pileup involving quite a few chasers, including Samfer, points leader McCrory, Ian Dutta, and Danny Wells. Lime Rock, as I said at the top of the program, is a point shaker, and looks like it's shaking up some point standings here today. As we are heading back now, green flag is just about to be waved. Green flag back out here on lap 11 of 20. Chris Washer, the new leader, but... As we said, these drivers have not been to pit road yet. in front of him. Here comes Shelton. Yeah, Shelton going to use her teammate out of Michael Norman Motorsports to get by Chris Washer for the lead. Now the question is, if Atkins can get out of the way, or is... Well, Atkins or appears... Is, um, I, I think Atkins is up to speed. Up to speed. And she's on the tail end of the lead lap, so if she can get a quick caution, which has been the trend today, she can get back on the tail end. Exactly. I mean, this is perfect right now for Megan Atkins in the fact that we've got a good record of caution flags coming out here, the, the likelihood of and one happening. Also got her teammate behind her. And I'm not exactly certain either. When she teleported to Pitt Road, she may have actually gotten some service on that machine, which means she could maybe make it the rest of the way if this thing goes into a long green flag run, which it won't because there's the and caution. The so never mind that. Oh! Shelf! What the? Whoa! What I in the world? Oh my goodness, you got to be kidding oh, me. Shelton. She hangs on to it though, but that was teammates. That, oh, that was wild. That was heart-stopping. 
Holy cow! I, I'm not sure. Shelton did not. I, I guess she was. She was putting up a run, and Atkins comes to the line. I don't know why Atkins slowed down, but I don't either. I mean, I know Atkins was battling to stay on the tail in the lead lap, which she did do. But my and, goodness, and she, they, she, she did come back around Shelton, though. She she did get back around her, so. Atkins right, will but, return to the tail end. But man, we almost had two teammates get together there, and one of those cars is the current leader. That yeah, was that was scary. Yeah. I I have not seen that before, and that was actually quite scary. That was incredibly close. Jessica probably could have taken herself out of that, but who knows? Yeah, she, that was a tremendous job by Jessica to save that thing, because we know last time we were at a road course, Watkins Glen, she was running really well. And she ended up getting taken out in an incident in the truck series race late in that event. Here, she was leading, almost hit the inside retaining wall in one, and almost got into the tire barrier off of two, as Kyle Matthews is coming to pit road. Doesn't look to have any damage, so he was running second, I think, at the time. Poteet, that looks, he looks to stay out. Cody Lamas, he's yeah. coming in, though. Lamas is in. Here comes Langford. I saw somebody else. Oh, Ralph Mason. And these are a number of drivers like who you. did not pit. Oh my goodness! I think I know who our caution was. Uh-oh. I have a feeling it was the guy who led us to the green on that last restart, Chris Washer. Uh-oh. Oh, and now he's bumped. Yeah. Oh, look at this! Oh, tempers! Shoving Noah. with Noah Hart. What's that all about? I don't know if them two got together or anything, but... I mean, Noah Hart doesn't look to have any damage, but... It's breaking down here right now, I'm telling you. Good heavens. So, let's run down what happened here. Chris Washer appears to be the reason for the caution. Two girls almost got together, and we're under caution. Yeah, let's get some video footage of what exactly went on here, because that was some crazy stuff going on in that last few laps. Oh, this wreck took place right at the tail end of the field, basically. Number of drivers just on the tail end of the lead lap, and I think it's going to start here with Ian Dutt in the 60. Yeah, he and Schwallenberg just kind of crowded each other again. Gets put up in the wall. I don't know what's wall. up with, and, it's, and once again, in our trouble spot. Yep. Oh, Andrea Erickson also had trouble. I didn't even see that. Uh-oh. Another 40, chaser. The 42 car... Now who's she gonna oh three wide situation here with Trent Dunham and Sean Henley and Deja Vu. Yep. It's Whenever you put just Sun, like Sun Chips, Viagra and you put Sun Chips, Viagra and Texaco Haviland together, it's not a good mix. Uh, yeah. Oh wow, Henley got the steel guard row, came down into Joshua Ooh. Michaels up ahead there. And they somehow are gonna hang on to it. Wow. That was a nice save, but Henley's now got some damage on his Chevrolet. Yeah. A uh, tough break for Henley, and also a really tough break for Erickson. But yeah. Does she really have a no, lot of damage? No, I don't, I don't really think she got a lot of damage. She may have some on the left side, but the tough break for her is the, the loss of track position because we know she qualified up in the top five. She was back here with the drivers who had pitted back two caution flags ago. And she is 13th in the point standings, a total of 61 points out. Same situation kind of as Danny Wells, and we know that Danny may be out of the championship hunt. This could very well have taken Erickson out of the championship hunt, depending on how uh, Pitt's strategy plays out in the remainder of this race. And that's her last glimmer of hope, uh, the Pitt uh, the pit strategy and stuff. If, Pretty if much. it doesn't work out for her, it looks to be over. For yep, her. Erickson's got to rely on drivers having difficulty with Pitt's strategy here. We know that she probably can make it the rest of the way, although that's a big question mark, depending on when she pitted. I think that was back around lap 9, so she'd be right on the edge of being able to make it, but that's what brought out our caution. Let's go back for yet another green... Well, actually, no. Let's actually uh, quickly take a look at a replay of the Jessica Shelton-Megan Atkins incident. So this was coming down to the caution. Atkins is racing to stay on the lead lap. Shelton... She, and, and Atkins did stay on. And then Shelton comes up into Atkins, and I thought the two of them were going to wreck. But then right about... 
Oh, she got it just a little. Just a little with that right rear. Atkins did a good job of saving it, though. And here's where I thought Jessica Shelton may be out of it because there's no way you can enter into a corner that way and not slide off the track. And we've seen once more too once too often in this turn, you go way wide here, you hit that tire barrier, you're basically done because there's that the tires just literally shred the car apart. And when she went wide here, I thought Shelton was gonna hit those tires. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, but she did an, ama an incredible job. I couldn't have even done that. And I, I mean, I have done it before, but I don't think I could do it from that position where she was entering the first corner, but she did a great job of Yes, she it. did. That was an unbelievable piece of di driving there by uh, Shelton. And boy, I, <laughs> I'd love to be inside the headset of both those drivers, find out just exactly what went on there. I don't know if it was a communication problem or what, but the two of them nearly took each other out. I think I'm gonna have to have a maybe I'll no I think well Jessica did go up in the into Atkins but I don't know maybe Michael's gonna have a sit down with them or something I don't know I don't know if he saw that or not but uh, I mean of course I'll talk to my driver but we'll see all right well tempers may be flaring don't know what the whole inside story of that was but. The good news is, Shelton still will be the leader, Atkins back on the lead lap, so what could have been a very horrifying end to that whole incident there actually has a little glimmer of goodness to it. So let's head back now for the restart. Getting ready to go back to Green Flag Racing, you'll notice Chris Washer, we talked about him back on that caution. What actually happened was he and Joshua Collard got backed up into each other under the yellow flag when they were getting into their positions, so... Chris Washer will still restart in second, but he does have that damage. He starts behind Jessica Shelton, then you got Dylan Pote third, fourth Mary Cole, Johnson Adino fifth, then Noah Hart, Charles Sanford, Richard Johnson now in eighth, ninth Jake Cole, and Charles Jackson is in the tenth position. Only drivers that I know of that have not yet come to pit road are first through sixth, and that's Shelton, Washer, Pote, Mary Cole, Citadino, and Noah Hart. So they can't make it the rest of the way here. They must be relying on another caution flag. Yep, that's usually how the way it goes. Now, we'll see if Washer's going to be up to speed here or if he's going to hold up Poteet and uh, everybody else behind him. But uh, Poteet's looking. Yeah, it looks uh, no. like no, Washer, Washer must be up to speed because he's keeping tabs right there with Jessica Shelton. And, ooh, whoa, I thought he might actually make a move there on the 29, but not quite. So here's the big question. If this thing goes into a green, long green flag run, that could be problems for the 29. Because right now we're still green, but we're in that trouble spot area. Yeah, I think whenever we come back around the corner, I think we will have a caution. I probably did just jinx it, but oh well. But that's been the trend all day today. Citadino's in a bit of a battle back there for fifth, I saw. Yep, Citadino back here with uh, Noah Hart. Two chasers there. Hart 11th in points, Citadino fourth in the standings. Matter of fact, a lot of chasers up here near the front. Oh, and now we got pit stops going on here with Shelton and Chris Washer as we are still under green. So that caution yep. flag did not come out for them. And that, and that that's not what they wanted to see, obviously. Now they're going to be most likely caught off the lead lap or something. And Jake Cole Paul and uh, Richard <laughs> Johnson. <kinda> funny. <laughs> they're not, if you flip the numbers, they're the same. It's kind of funny. I know, right? <laughs> And Mary Cole inherits the lead here. Still looking for her first Snickers Cup Series win of the season. Was a two-time winner in Snickers Cup last season. And running good right now. But again, she, Noah Hart, Don Cittadino, those drivers, I don't think they've been to pit road yet. And the 18 may be coming in this time. If those other two came in a lap ago, let's see. Nope, she? she's staying out. Nope, she stayed out. Is Hart coming in, though? Oh, I think Hart, I Hart, uh, I don't know if he made it on cleanly or not. Almost looks like he might have almost spun coming to pit road, but he's on there, though. That's the key word there. He made it. He did make it. That is true. So, good job there by Noah yeah, Hart. Hold the lead. So, now, this is, this is unusual. We're actually in a green flag run. We haven't had this all day, and I think this is kind of throwing a curveball for these drivers. 
Yeah, I mean, she, geez, the, the, and you know how it always happens. Like I've had the experience of pit strategy trouble. I mean, when I won the race here two seasons ago, Margaret Mason, she had to come to pit road, handed the race to me. But then the next season when we came back here, I ended up being the position where Margaret Mason was in, didn't come up with a win, and I think it was Dunham that came in a win, and here comes Mary Cole. Mary Cole, Citadino, they're coming, and Charles Sanford now Cole takes Sanford. the lead over. Talk about jostling positions. The Charles and Charles show. It is indeed. Yes, indeed. Jackson and Sanford. Sanford, last win he had, that was, of course, the Daytona 500. Charles Jackson has yet to go to victory lane here this season in Season 7. He's creeping up to third, our pole sitter, Michael Norman. He's coming, and look who else is right there with him. Joshua Michaels. What Joshua a run there Michael. for Team Red Bull. And he's uh, we haven't seen his other teammate yet, but hmm, that's yeah, I don't know where Dougie Shears is. Let's see where Shears is at. There's Jacob Lawler. The Huggies, um, the Huggies car right there also. Yep. And, and if I'm not mistaken, I couldn't t quite tell who was behind him, but we'll we'll document that later. There's there's Dougie Andy. Shears. Uh oh, more uh -oh, pit stops. London. Holy cow! Double wide coming onto pit road. Dylan Young and Pichu London. And Sanford was one of those drivers that came in. So the lead so is going lead over to Joshua to Michaels. Or, or Michaels. Yeah, Michaels apparently got around both Charles Jackson and Michael Norman. So we're left with the big question. Who can make it? And um, I can't quite tell how many laps we do have left. but We got three to go, two to go at the line here. And I'm considering, you did say those drivers that were involved with um, Megan Atkins a couple lap, couple cautions ago, they were yeah, maybe got damage repaired, so maybe they could be potential dark horses if these guys have hit. Yep, well, Michaels, Michaels is coming in. Here comes Michaels. And here comes Charles Jackson. Jackson and Norman. Michael Norman will go to the point. Looks like Joshua Collard has hit pit road. Actually, he's just leaving pit road. So is Sanford. So, just a little less than two to go. Can Michael Norman make it the rest of the way? He's behind him. Tied Chris. for second in points, if I'm not mistaken. Chris Washington. That's right. Or Chris. is he? Well, he's a lap down right now at 31st, but I think, if we look at our score monitor, I think he's running Cycle better around. than Collard. Well, no, not yet. Collard has scored 28th. we got to wait till that cycles around. But the question is, does Norman have to pit? If yeah, that's the big question. Here, I, if he doesn't pit here, I think he's got it. We'll have to see. No, he's not coming. And who is second? White flag. There's second place, I think. No, that's Mary Cole. She's not second, is she? She might be. I think Norman's the only driver under this green flag run that has not come to pit road. Oh, Henley was second. Second. He was second. I don't we know where he'll be now. Line. We are on the white flag lap. Yes, we are. So now Michael North. Are we gonna have a Are we gonna have a weird finish with a driver on pit road and then all that mess? I don't but know. Good news for Norman if that hap if that happens. He's at his pistol is ahead of the start finish line. So good point. The edgy coming here at the line. Yeah, because he's the pole sitter. So that's a very good point. Here we go, out of the oh, final corner. It, is Norman going to coast it down the front straightaway, or will he come to pit road? He's going all the way. Michael Norman, out of out of the final corner, he's going to come down here. He's going to win here at Lime Rock. And he did it with fuel. He was not even on fumes. That car was full throttling it all the way down the front straightaway. you got to wonder if maybe, just maybe, when he came down pit road that first time, if he was saving fuel all the times we were under those caution flags because he made this entire 20 lap race on one pit stop. He may have been conserving fuel. That, that's a, it's a great job by Michael Mormon and the crew. And you know, Chris, that at road courses, it's very difficult to go coast to coast from pole to win, especially with the fact that you actually haven't dominated the race. I mean, Norman, yeah, he led quite a bit at the beginning of this race, but when he came down to pit, he had to work his way through traffic. So. It's not like he dominated the race. He actually put himself in a position to come up through the field and take the win after starting on the front row. 
I mean, I, I mean, me and Michael, we've been together ever since uh, season six is whenever I think we started our relationship. Um, he he's he does an excellent job during these races. I'm surprised he, I'm it was surprised it wasn't the greatest season for him, but yeah, great job here today. Is this his first win of the season or not? This, this is his second, second win of the season. Yeah, seventeenth in points coming to this race, third highest of non chasers and. What actually started out as a rather dismal season for that three team is now turning into quite a good season here in the second half. Yeah, and um, uh, even though even though the, he did not make the chase, I'd be watching out for him next season. Let's take a look and see where the rest of our chasers ended up finishing this race. Noah Hart will finish the day in third. Highest fishing chaser, Citadino, who I believe they're saying is going to be the points leader next week, finishes fourth. Lawler was sixth. Pope Teton eighth. Uh, let's see. Looking further down, Lankford in 19th. Andrea Erickson, 24th. And then everybody else finished off the lead lap. 26th for Washer, 27th for Henley. Samford Collard in 28th and 29th. Dutta in 31st. Bob Jones, 36th. McCurry out of the race in 37th. And then Danny Wells out of the race in 38th place. But this race is over. Not Erickson, sorry. This race is over. And Chris, I want to thank you for joining me. It was a pleasure to be here at one of my favorite tracks on the NNSRA circuit. Hopefully, I will do better next time and not impale the wall. <laughs> but, well, it, it was an exciting race. Congrats to Michael Norman and the Michael Norman Motorsports team. You know, might as well go down there and congratulate him since he is going to be my future boss. But, might as well get the, might as well get the, um, I don't know what the word for it is. Just, eh, I'll figure it out. <laughs> anyway. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this race. Be sure to subscribe to Chris Dalton's channel. Link is in the description. And we'll see you guys next time here on the SJ Sports Channel, offline racing at its best. Thanks for watching. Later.